My name is Pia Ostergaard and I work for the Daphne Jackson Trust. The Daphne Jackson Trust is focusing on getting more women into STEM because we realise that there is a big gender imbalance. There's a lot of women who train at undergraduate level, postgraduate level and then choose to have a career break. And if they do not return back into the workforce, then we have got a lot of wasted talent. So the Daphne Jackson Trust has devised a fellowship scheme that helps women to return after career break into their chosen STEM career. So this is very important to me personally because I myself um, am coming from a STEM career. I'm working in biomedical science and I also wanted to have a family. So after having had two children, I wanted to return back to my career, but found that quite uh, difficult. So I then heard about the Daphne Jackson Trust and applied for a fellowship scheme uh, through the Trust. And um, the scheme is a part-time fellowship where you have a chance to actually balance um, your family life with work and at the same time fulfilling your wish to be a mother at the same time as, as having a career as well. So the Daphne Jackson Trust is spending a lot of time trying to persuade other people to, to change behaviour. Um, we're working with a lot of organisations where we're trying to persuade them that we need to do something about the gender imbalance. We need to try and get more women into STEM. We're working a lot with universities, so our chief executive, Katie Perry, is um, travelling around the country, visiting universities, trying to persuade them to, to buy into the Daphne Jackson Fellowship Scheme so that they can host and sponsor fellows um, and thereby helping women to return in, into a STEM career. And with the Athena Swan um, on the agenda in most universities nowadays, um, the universities are seeing the Daphne Jackson Trust as a way to, to address this uh, gender imbalance. So that's one of the examples on how we're persuading organisations to, to help and, and to change behaviour. Um, we're also working with learned societies. For instance, the Royal Society of Chemistry has recently agreed to run a five-year program where they want to re help return 25 women back into chemistry. So we're working very hard to persuade different organisations to help us return women back to a STEM career. So the biggest challenge here is to change people's mindset. We need a cultural change. People need to understand that you can still provide a good piece of work even though you work flexibly, even though you work part-time. I'm not a unique example of someone who's worked part-time for eight years. Um, a lot of other women can do that too. And the research that I have produced in those eight years is still of a very high quality compared to my full-time colleagues. And I have published in, in, in high-impact journals too. And I think what we need to make sure is that every employer understands that this is possible, that women, even though you work part-time and want to balance your family and your work life, it can be done.